Hi, I'm Steve Sikora with Harmonic Software Production Studios. I'm a longtime FileMaker veteran with a degree in music composition, and I'm going to be your host for this session, FileMaker's Role in Your Orchestra. While there's a strong resonance between musicians and coders, you don't need to have any particular background with or knowledge of music to understand this session. A more famous Steve used to talk about his company striving for the intersection of technology and the liberal arts. And I believe that this goal is important for music and software. Good music requires both art and science. We have for centuries been perfecting and advancing the technology of music with instruments, venues, notation, techniques, recording and reproduction technology, broadcast technology, streaming technology, etc. Music today is quite inseparable from these many technologies developed over these many centuries. Software is a much newer technology, and we may think of software in strictly technical terms, but software without art is a terrible thing, because software without art lacks humanity. The best software finds that intersection of technology and the liberal arts. When Faumaker announced last year that they were changing their name to Claris and had acquired a company that would be added as a second product line, Claris Connect, they introduced us to a new term, orchestration. So, now that we're in the business of orchestrating our integrations, where does FileMaker fit in this brave new world? To explore that, let's review three different systems where FileMaker plays a unique role. We'll use the metaphor of the orchestra to represent the various technologies and processes at play within each organization. FileMaker in each case is one of the performers and FileMaker's performance is shaped and informed significantly by its role within the orchestra and the nature of the orchestra surrounding FileMaker. Now I'm not going to tell you who the customers are. It really doesn't matter and in fact might get in the way of you seeing your FileMaker performer in these roles. We'll be embracing this metaphor throughout the presentation, so channel your inner composer as we enjoy the ride. For each segment, I'll start by introducing you to that role's position within a music orchestra. I'll then tell you the story of FileMaker in that role within our customer's orchestra. And finally, I'll sit down with one of my fellow composers and we'll discuss challenges, opportunities, and lessons learned with FileMaker in this role. We'll start with FileMaker as the section leader, then we'll discuss FileMaker as the soloist, and finally, FileMaker as the conductor. One last thing before we get started. I want to go over our metaphor one more time. We've already discussed that FileMaker is the performer, and the orchestra is the combination of systems and processes within which FileMaker performs. The audience, then, are the users and beneficiaries of our systems. Software developers and designers are our composers. And the compositions that our orchestra performs are the code and integrations that we as software developers create. It's as simple as that. I hope you find resonance with one or more of these works as we explore FileMaker's role in your orchestra. To start, let's discuss FileMaker as the section leader. What is a section leader? The section leader occupies an important role in the operation of an orchestra. They may be the most talented player of their instrument family, but it's also likely that they share a willingness and aptitude for other equally important skills. They act as 
the liaison between the conductor, referred to as maestro, and the musicians in their section. They lead various decisions about tone and approach, and they are called on to resolve disputes and miscommunication between their section's members and management. Each section leader has a differing set of roles based on the nature of their section. The percussion section leader, for instance, may spend much of their time determining which instruments need to be deployed and how they should be arranged. A string section leader will take the lead on bowings, that is, when to use up bows and down bows. The first violin section leader has a special name, concertmaster, and this individual takes responsibility for the entire orchestra. In professional symphonic orchestras, even though the conductor may change from program to program, the concertmaster is a fixture. A section leader is called upon to execute. They have to show up day in and day out, reliably performing their role. Done well, you'll never know about the section leader's contributions, but those contributions will lead to a whole greater than the sum of its parts. Our FileMaker section leader came to his orchestra several years ago. He was hired to replace a previous FileMaker 5 based section leader, which had long served in that position. He modestly and reliably goes about his tasks, and if I didn't tell you about him, you'd likely miss his importance. You see, FileMaker leads a key research and development section within his orchestra. This section, or division, is responsible for the verification of one of his industrial manufacturer's key products. FileMaker facilitates this by managing the details on a wide variety of parts, drawings, assemblies, locations, machines, and processes. FileMaker maintains deep knowledge of his division's workflow requirements and faithfully mediates between his fellow players and the expectation of his maestro, the parent company, and its marquee products. FileMaker does this through a sophisticated combination of security rules and permissions, logic and process engines, detailed inventory, test results tracking, and product location tracking. FileMaker remains secure in his role and has gained the trust and admiration of his teammates and superiors. We can expect FileMaker to maintain a long and fruitful tenure as he faithfully executes his duties. Now, to discuss our FileMaker section leader, I'd like to welcome Paul Mitchell. Paul has been with Harmonic for the past four years. Paul was initially hired to take over composition work for our FileMaker section leader and has served as lead composer for that business ever since. Paul. Paul, welcome. You've been composing for FileMaker for a very long time. Tell us a bit about your career. Well, hi, Steve. It's a pleasure to be here with you. I started working with FileMaker back in 1998 when I joined the tech support team for what was then called Claris FileMaker Pro. I trained for three weeks, and then they put me on the phones, helping users from across the country with their FileMaker apps. I did that for four years, rising to the level of senior uh, support rep before I took a job as an in-house developer for a company in the Chicagoland area. After four years there, I joined Salient Consulting. Mm -hmm. Later, I moved on to productive computing and then returned to Texas for another five-year stint as an in-house developer. I feel very privileged to be part of the team here at Harmonic, where I get to work with some of the best developers and best clients I've ever met. As you know, I've been a director and lead talent on several key productions, and I've had supporting roles on quite a few others. Every different position and project has been a learning experience for me. Now, this composition was, shall we say, a reorchestration of a previous composition. It was designed for a newer version of FileMaker. You came into this composition with the work mostly, but not entirely, complete. What do you remember about that time? Oh, I really jumped in at the deep end. 
we were pushing to finish the project and deploy against a deadline, but the original developers on the project had an even higher priority production that they had to work on, so I was covering for them, mm -hmm. although they were available to give me a great deal of guidance. This was the most complex app I'd ever worked on and used advanced development techniques that I'd never seen before. So it was quite an education for me, but one thing that helped me was that this client is a large industrial manufacturer in our, manufacturer in our area, and I had actually worked as a contractor in their facility prior to my FileMaker career. And so I had familiarity with their corporate culture and with their products. Right. So what do you find most interesting about this instance of FileMaker acting as a section leader? Well, I'd have to say that the most interesting thing to me is the interface design, in which most of the buttons are actually calculated fields that display a container image, an icon drawn from an extensive catalog of icons, and they all run the same master control script, which chooses, based on script parameters, what action to perform. But the script parameters themselves are stored in fields in a separate table. When I first thought, I thought it was over-engineered insanity. But when I came to understand it, I realized it was a versatile work of genius. That's really interesting. You know, one of the things that I appreciate about you is your caution against unnecessary over-engineering. Now, what skills have been especially important uh, working with our FileMaker as a section leader? Well, I think the most important thing I've brought to the table has been my communication skills understanding the client's needs, knowing what questions to ask, keeping good notes, making regular progress reports, setting expectations, and so forth. These are important on any project, but they become even more so on more complex projects. Yeah, isn't that the truth? It's, it's so important to set and manage expectations. Now, what challenges are especially noteworthy about this composition? Well, there are a number of challenges, but probably the most frustrating thing is the need to work completely offline and deploy in releases. We don't even have remote access to their servers. This is made easier by our use of the data separation model, so mm -hmm. that in most cases, when we're deploying new features, we can just substitute the UI file. Mm -hmm. But when I have to make changes to the data file and we have to do a full deployment, it's harder. Fortunately, we've developed some tools here at Harmonic to streamline this part of the process, and we've begun to use them on this project. Right. We're, we're talking about our build process that uh, wraps the FileMaker Migration Assistant with some custom code, and using that it really helps ease schema level uh, deployment. Greatly. So, in light of this experience, what advice would you give other developers writing for FileMaker as their section leader? Well, I would suggest that they should always be ready to learn and innovate. And always make sure that you're asking and answering the questions that constitute the flow of information around the project. Don't thrash around with a problem for too long. Get help. That's what a team is for and be upfront with information about the progress, obstacles, and challenges so that the people around you can have realistic expectations. Yeah, yeah. That really speaks to the role of a good section leader. That interface between the maestro, the larger organization in this case, and the section, the technologies, the processes, and the people within the particular division's work group. Paul. Anything else to add? Well, my favorite thing about the FileMaker platform is how it enables me to make users' lives easier, to simplify their workday and reduce stress and frustration. Knowing I'm helping people through my work is the best feeling. Hmm. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. FileMaker often acts in the role of the section leader. Especially in larger or more complex organizations, it is well suited to studiously and reliably executing its tasks. If your orchestra includes FileMaker as a section leader, you have a valuable player on your team. The cautionary note here is the thin line between reliability and complacency. Just because we can rely on that player to execute don't forget to ask him to solo 
from time to time. Think about what could be added to enhance his performance and challenge him to continue his growth and development. Now, let's talk about FileMaker as the soloist. What is a soloist? Solo is one of those funny words that is the same as a noun, a verb, or an adjective. I think we all have an idea of what a soloist is, but in an orchestra, some instruments are always playing solo. We only need one of these. Some instruments play a solo passage within a larger composition. You'll often see the conductor recognize these players at the end of the piece during applause. But the quintessential solo with an orchestra is called a concerto. This is where an especially talented or famous musician will stand at the front of the stage and perform a solo accompanied by the orchestra. The concerto is designed to show off the soloist, but could not be performed without the orchestra. What do we think of when we think of soloists? We might see them as impressive, talented, even amazing. We might also hear stories of how they're fussy divas that must have everything just so. The job of the soloist is to be ever better to transcend. They have to transcend the orchestra. They have to transcend their instrument and the hall. They have to transcend their previous performance and their competition. The soloist can tend to be a bit faddish and go into and out of vogue on the whims of their fans. If they're hot, they'll be asked to reproduce that thing for which they are famous over and over. When they're not, they'll be relegated to secondary and tertiary performance venues until they are eventually retired as entertainment at some second-rate resort. Being the soloist is a challenging endeavor. Fame and fortune await the few who manage to succeed, but staying at the top is no easy game. And there is always a younger, faster, hungrier individual looking to usurp their position. Our FileMaker soloist has had a long and storied career. She's been playing this tune for 14 years now, and she has been a fierce competitor. It has really been a remarkable run. The company where FileMaker works is barely recognizable from when she started so long ago, and yet she has been able to constantly improve and reinvent her performance in a way that keeps her audience coming back for more. FileMaker occupies a unique role within the sales operation group at a major consumer products company. She ingests sales information from EDI and manual data sources, uses her powerful indexing and query engine to match those transactions to her customers, and outputs territory-aligned sales data for use in compensation. She also feeds a variety of other systems used for forecasting and reporting, Without FileMaker in this role, the sales team wouldn't get paid and management would not have a clear picture of their indirect and direct sales alignment. Now to discuss our FileMaker soloist, I'd like to welcome Daisy Graves. All right, I'm here with Daisy Graves. Daisy's uh, our lead composer. Uh, for our FileMaker soloist. She's also a senior developer and director here at Harmonic. Daisy, thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. So like a lot of us, uh, you came to FileMaker somewhat unintentionally. Tell us a little bit about that. So I was initially an office manager in Wichita Falls. I just graduated with my bachelor's, so I was looking to do something with my degree. Got a job offer in Austin at a nonprofit um, and they're like, hey, we would love to have you, but here's one of the tasks. We need you to redo our membership software. And it's based on, built on FileMaker. This thing called FileMaker. <laughs> I was like, I have no idea what that is, but sure, why not? I'm up for the challenge. 
got there. They wanted me to use the system for a year, so I understood the pain points and what needed to be redone. Mm -hmm. Hired outside consulting company. They came in, helped me build it, and taught me along the way. And then I finished my batch, my master's in my MBA in accounting. And then I got a call from a recruiter asking if I'd be interested in a job in the Dallas area. Yeah, and uh, met us for the first time. That's right. Right. So MBA in accounting, uh, did you start your master's degree in accounting? I actually started it in human resource because that's all the college offered. Then once I moved to Austin, I transferred and they had an accounting program, so I went ahead and changed it over to accounting. Hmm. So you're one of these unique individuals who loves numbers. Yes. Yeah. And um, there's certainly a lot of numbers with, with this particular customer and this particular composition. Uh, it's all about the numbers, right? Correct. Yes, with this client, we're able to take their data that we get from raw sources and roll the numbers up in different ways to present the different departments the way they need to see the numbers. Sales department needs to see it this way. The HR people that pay the compensation need to see it this way. And the back end need to see it another way. But it's all the same numbers. It's just how do we show and find them in the patterns to make it work the way they need it to show. Yeah. So you weren't the original composer. Uh, for this particular FileMaker soloist. Uh, in fact, some of the composition was quite old, um, all the way back to the mid-2000s. So how has that been good and how has that been bad? I think it's been a mix of both. I mean, you were the actual first composer of it that I took it over from. So I was able to learn how things used to work in FileMaker and how we had to do different tricks to make it work the way we wanted to then, and then looking at it with fresh eyes and said, you know, we have these tools available now. Let's try to do some, change some of this stuff and upgrade it and make it do these things better with the newer technology and the base coding base that we have available to us. Um, can you talk about some of the specific things that, uh, that we've added recently to our soloist repertoire? Yeah, so this, so last summer, we were able to upgrade their UI, and we gave them a, a WebDirect version of it so that they were able to process their, their matching, customer matches, to faster and more efficiently than being opening FileMaker on a remote system where the server's somewhere else and causing a lot of lag for them. That was a major pain point that it was taking so long so we created a web direct interface. They've been, they've loved it because it just works so much faster. In the past year, they've increased it threefold than what they were doing the year prior. So web direct really was an elegant way of, of uh, elevating and, and speeding up the, the data processing. How many users are there of the FileMaker portion of this particular system? So current backend users that log into FileMaker directly or WebDirect, there's about, I think, seven now. And the portion that we push now to, um, to web, to web reporting, um, there is, 115 that log into web reporting to check out their compensation reports. Uh, can you give us some kind of a picture of how large the, that count of seven is compared with the total company? Is that... Uh, oh, very minute. I mean, it's very, very little compared to how big the company is. Yeah, a grain of sand. Yes. Yeah, on, on, on a beach. Yes. Yeah. So it really is that type of a composition where FileMaker's playing a, a very unique singular role that it's, that it's especially well suited to. And um, the composition wouldn't happen without it. But it's also, uh, there's, there's a lot more going on. It's, it's, it's a very specific point in, in this particular universe. Yes. 
what skills of yours have been especially important in working with our FileMaker soloist? I think what's been really important and critical is listening, listening to what they need and how can I implement what they're trying to come across and what they're trying to relay to, to other departments. And how can I take their initial ask and make it work? Because what they ask for isn't always what they need. We have to interpret what, what is it that they're really asking for. Now, we've been told that after a long and storied career, our FileMaker soloist is going to be replaced, yes. retired. Um, what are you thinking about that? I'm sad in a way because I really love this project and it's fun and they're great people to work with and they're very receptive of the work that we put in and they've, we've built a great relationship with them. So well, I'll miss them as a, as a client and being able to talk to them because I that brings a big hole to my schedule because that's mainly what I work on. Right. What advice would you give to other developers that, that have a FileMaker as a soloist system or situation? To stretch your creativity. Always try to figure out a way to make it bigger and better. That way you secure its, its space because it's easily somebody else can come along and say, you know what, we can really do that better. But if you're always constantly reinventing and making, making strides with your software, and then they can't replace that as easily. Just make your own space for it. Anything else to add? Create something beautiful and long, that has longevity, and then so you can keep living for another day. Yeah, that's really great. It's been a wonderful ride, so it has been. thank you. Thanks for having me. As FileMaker composers, we believe deeply in the power and significance of FileMaker. If your orchestra has FileMaker as its soloist, be realistic about FileMaker's talents, stay ahead of its competition, and enjoy the limelight of having FileMaker standing at the front of your stage while it lasts. Finally, let's discuss FileMaker as the conductor. I'll bet you have an image of a conductor in your head right now. They're probably standing in front of the ensemble, dressed in tails, waving their arms to the music while putting on a secondary show with their hair. That's an entirely common picture of the modern orchestral conductor, but it wasn't always like this. In the Middle Ages, a church music leader was given a staff to signify their role. As music became more rhythmically complex, that staff was moved up and down to indicate the beat. In 18th century instrumental music, the ensemble was led by one of its members. The concertmaster, for instance, could use his bow as a baton. This practice remains common today with chamber music. Our modern concept of the conductor began gaining prominence in the late 18th century as music and orchestras grew in size, instrumentation, and complexity. By the mid-19th century, the orchestral concert with a conductor at the podium using a baton to direct the musicians was cemented in form and structure that we would find familiar today. But what does a conductor actually do? The conductor begins by selecting the music, looking for pieces that maximize audience interest while showing off and perhaps stretching the bounds of their musicians. They'll schedule a performance with an eye to season, effort, and staffing needs. As the performance approaches, the conductor will rehearse the music. They'll use their knowledge and experience to allow the right amount of time and interaction with the work prior to the premiere. Too little time, and the orchestra is likely to fail. Too much, and the music becomes stale, and resources are wasted. Now the night is here when the conductor conducts. 
They'll help the musicians start together, stay together, and stop together. They will cue in various instruments and make on-the-fly adjustments to tempo, volume, and expression. They are, in real time, calling for an assemblage of parts to result in a greater whole. Once the piece is over, the conductor accepts the audience's applause and acknowledges the musicians. The conductor iterates this process over and over again with different compositions on different nights and even different ensembles. Our FileMaker conductor has been maestro of his orchestra for the past seven years. During that time frame, both his orchestra and his audience have exploded in size, complexity, and expectations. His is a constantly rising star as success begets success. FileMaker works at a mid-sized Medicaid biller where he is responsible for the direction, timing, and curation of nearly every aspect of his company's daily processes. He conducts interactions between multiple systems and organizations, acting alternately as client and server for a variety of APIs and integrations. He manages a wildly busy schedule of events, background tasks, scheduled and server-side scripts. He serves as the conduit for hundreds of internal and thousands of external users. He manages an archive of millions of electronic documents and hundreds of millions of data points, all while maintaining appropriate levels of compliance, privacy, and security due to the sensitive PHI within his data sets. He's constantly on the job looking for mistakes and fraud, and he makes sure everyone gets paid and reimbursed. Famiker has learned over the years to plan, rehearse, and premiere his new compositions with care, studiously writing his performance notes with an eye towards his audience's biases and their blind spots. The pace of innovation has forced Famiker to become an expert at planning one concert while in the process of premiering another. In the past year, Famiker has premiered several entirely new works and performed a large number of tweaked and enhanced old favorites. Without FileMaker as conductor, this orchestra would be a hopeless cacophony of noise. Now, to discuss our FileMaker conductor, I'd like to welcome Eric Clark. Eric recently celebrated his one-year anniversary as a FileMaker developer with Harmonic. And Eric serves as one of many composers for our FileMaker conductor. Eric? Welcome, Eric. Tell us a little bit about your FileMaker career and your road to Harmonic. Well, thanks, Steve. I, I'm glad to be here. So, like many of us, I got into FileMaker by chance. So I'm a classically trained musician, and I've been playing since I was about eight, and I've been actually conducting since I was about 13. So right out of college with a music degree in hand, a friend and I started a company, and I had to handle all of our back-end data management stuff, of which I, I knew nothing. So I had to learn quickly because in a company of two people, you just have to figure it out. So that was really my first introduction to databases and integrations. A few years later, I was working for a different company that needed a systems overhaul, except there wasn't a piece of software uh, on the market that fit what we needed. So in my research for custom software, I discovered FileMaker and more or less instantly knew that, that this was the solution that I was looking for but didn't know existed. Uh, but you know, our custom software still had to be built, and as a smaller company, we didn't have the capital to hire a consultant to come in and build it for us. So despite having zero previous development experience, I was able to convince my boss to pay me to build our system learning as I went. Nice. I did a lot of learning very quickly, and in about 60 days, some of those days more frustrating than others, <laughs> uh, we released the first version of our system, which completely changed how we were able to operate as a company. After a year of developing, I attended my first FileMaker DevCon right here in Dallas, and actually the very first developer I met was a Harmonic employee. Yeah. Uh, a few months after DevCon, a recruiter reached out to me, 
reconnected me with harmonic and you know the rest is history thank goodness <laughs> as a musician employed as a software developer what parallels would you observe between music and software well you know whether you're composing music or performing music there are certain tricks and techniques that we as musicians have up our sleeves and you know we also have tricks up our software development sleeves but we have to be judicious in when we choose to use each technique you know just because we can doesn't mean that we should another good parallel is the use of what in music we call ornaments which are stylistic embellishments where we add a few more notes that are actually written on the page and there's certain types of ornaments that sound great in some styles of music and really don't fit at all in other styles of music Right? There are certain ornaments that sound great at the opera that would sound horrible on a Phil Collins album. Right? Uh, a mistake I made early on, both as, as an instrumentalist and as a developer, is I would find an ornament or a technique or a tool that I thought was super cool. Yeah. And then I would proceed to use it everywhere yeah. because it was fun. But, but I had to learn with experience to curtail some of those things. And you know, I may still do some of that now while I'm playing at home by myself because it's just me and it's for fun. But if I'm doing a public performance, a performance for someone else, which is what we do all the time in software development, we have to subjugate what's fun for what's actually appropriate. Another parallel between music and software I like to call out is that it's never done. Mm. It, it just premieres. And what I mean by that is a musical composition is never complete the piece just premieres and the composer stops working on it. But in many cases, composers will go back sometimes years after the premiere mm -hmm. and change the composition. They'll tweak yep. it and improve it. Even something like Schubert's Eighth Symphony, which is called the Unfinished Symphony because it only has two movements rather than the traditional four because he died before finishing it. Even that is a beautiful, complete piece of music even though the composer wasn't done with his vision for it. Yeah. Software is the same way, right? If you wait until it's done to release it, you'll never release anything. It's only done when the composer or the developer stops working on it. So in your opinion, uh, what strengths does FileMaker bring to the role of the conductor? Well, off the top of my head, I think one of those strengths has to be the variety of ways we have in FileMaker to talk to other systems and the relative simplicity of implementing those. It's, it's a real asset. So from something as simple as you know, calling a script from a different file to ESS connections or the ability to have plugins to do extra things or the ability to call external services. So from FileMaker, we can integrate with an external API but we can also call custom PHP code to run on the same or on a different machine, and, and that's a real, real asset. You know, having a conductor who knows how to talk effectively with string players and woodwind players and brass players and percussionists is a real strength. A quick example of a particular use case that I think is quite creative and I know has been really effective on this project so there's a few places in the system where we've got custom web code running inside of a web viewer that shows a, a web page displaying data that doesn't live inside a FileMaker and therefore isn't reliant on a FileMaker ESS connection. It's relying instead on SQL queries in backend PHP code, which means that it's extremely fast. And on this web page, there's you know, buttons you can click that will go and run some other PHP scripts modifying the data in, in whatever way we need. And all of that happens on the back end on the SQL server, so there's no performance impact on the FileMaker server or on the user's local machine. And all of this is happening inside a FileMaker web viewer. It's pretty slick. Yeah, yeah. I remember when we first added those, we, we couldn't figure out what to call them, so we, we ultimately just called them widgets, right? And, and now the, the widgets are proliferating everywhere. What skills of yours have been valuable uh, composing for FileMaker as a conductor? One of my strengths has to be my ability to understand, distill, and then clearly articulate complex processes and interactions. So here at Harmonic, working on this particular system, I've led a large part of the effort in performing quality assurance testing. 
And it's one thing for us as developers to know it works, particularly if we were the ones who built it. But it's another thing entirely for the customer to feel confident and comfortable that a new feature works prior to taking it live. Particularly valuable, I think, has been my skill of you know, breaking things down into their component parts and then communicating those in a digestible and comprehensible manner to our customer so that they can understand and walk through step by step to test out and approve a new feature set. So this particular conductor, we've written a lot of compositions mm -hmm. for him and uh, we have a lot more in the hopper. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what, what challenges would you call out as, as noteworthy? A challenge is managing system resources. All of the different sections of this orchestra demand resources. Two people can't play the bass drum at the same time. Mm. Resources are shared within sections, but also across the orchestra. A great example of this is our use of server-side scripting and bots and script schedules. Now, this analogy doesn't quite work, but let's, let's go with it. So some sections are very loud, you could say, and demand a lot of system resources. When those sections are playing, very few other musicians can be playing because otherwise the volume could potentially overwhelm and crash the system. Mm -hmm. So I think orchestration and conducting are, are great words to describe one of the things we're currently working on with our overnight scripting. As we add more and more processing into our overnight scripting, it seems that every hour of the night has something running. Yeah. And some of those processes can happen concurrently and others can't. Some have dependencies on other things. So the real challenge is figuring out in all of these different processes, what are the dependencies and, and how do we add those, uh, how do we connect those in a way so that as we add more things into the overnight process, we know where we can add things in and not break anything else. In light of your experience composing uh, for this particular audience, composing for, for FileMaker as the conductor here, um, what sage advice would you give uh, other developers in a similar situation? Plan up front. So decide on a convention for how things are going to be named and then follow it. This goes for names of fields and table occurrences and layouts, strategies for passing parameters, strategies for organizing scripts, you name it. This will make managing the orchestra much, much easier. So in this particular system, we have conventions for naming primary and foreign keys, like a lot of people do, but those conventions are the same in the FileMaker and the ESS tables. We have conventions for naming tables. We have conventions for how we implement and script around things like status and, and level fields, which are followed in the FileMaker and the ESS tables. We have conventions for naming scripts and layouts and how we pass parameters. Some of those conventions are our own best practices, mm -hmm. and some of them are just conventions. They're not right or wrong, they just are. Yeah. And that, that's really the point, is deciding on a way something basic like this will be done and then do it that way every time. All of that is incredibly helpful, particularly when working on a team of developers in, in keeping things straight. Speaking of collaboration, I think another thing that has been incredibly helpful on this particular project is our consistent, regular communication with the customer. So Steve, I know that you've got a weekly meeting with the customer that has really helped provide direction and clarity on a number of issues. And I really think having that regular feedback and discussion with the customer is invaluable. It is, it is critical, especially uh, with this particular customer. Eric, it's been great to have you today. You've given us a lot to think about. Well, thanks, Steve. It's been fun. I've enjoyed being here. FileMaker can make a wonderful conductor. In small and medium-sized companies, FileMaker can literally run the show. And once FileMaker starts conducting an orchestra, it is common for that orchestra to grow in size, complexity, and capacity. As you compose for your FileMaker conductor, remember that the first job of a conductor is to curate. Plan before you practice. Practice before you play. 
Interpret your composition with integrity and intent. Listen for your audience's response and integrate those results as you iterate into the future. What have we learned about FileMaker's role in our orchestras? Paul Mitchell joined us to discuss FileMaker as the section leader. Within this orchestra, FileMaker reliably executes an important process within a department-level workgroup of a large industrial manufacturer. In his role, FileMaker is destined for a long tenure and does an admirable job communicating between his maestro and his section. Paul reminded us that a key skill when writing for FileMaker as a section leader was effective communication and expectation setting. That a primary challenge with this particular composition was the need to develop without direct access to the production system, and that this challenge has forced us to develop tools and processes to help streamline implementation of new schema. And that the key takeaway was teamwork. Be cautious of the thin line between reliability and complacency. Find moments where FileMaker can solo and challenge your section leader to continue their growth and development. Next, Daisy Graves gave us insight into FileMaker as the soloist. We heard about FileMaker's long and storied solo career at a major consumer products company where FileMaker has transcended expectations for many years and has managed to retain the spotlight at the front of the orchestra. Daisy talked about the challenge of composing for a soloist with such a significant legacy and the thrill of successfully debuting a new work and owning the audience's attention for another day. She shared with us her disappointment that this soloist's career was heading towards retirement, but we celebrated and recognized the long run that our soloist has achieved. Writing for a soloist is a challenging endeavor as you work tirelessly to maintain your audience's attention. Compose with a realistic assessment of FileMaker's talents and healthy respect for its competition. And don't forget to enjoy the limelight while you have it. Finally, Eric Clark joined us to explore FileMaker as the conductor. We heard about FileMaker's constantly growing orchestra at a Medicaid biller where he works daily to plan, rehearse, and perform both new compositions and old favorites to an ever-expanding audience. Eric discussed the need to be judicious in our techniques and ornamentation. He reminded us that compositions are never done. They're simply debuted. He told us about his involvement with QA and test plans, rehearsing works before their debut, the challenge of managing system resources with so many competing interests, and the need for conventions and collaboration when writing for the conductor of an orchestra of this complexity. The role of the conductor is a natural fit for FileMaker. As your conductor succeeds with their growing orchestra, curation will rapidly become your most important strategy. Plan, practice, interpret, and listen to integrate your findings as you iterate towards your next composition. FileMaker has served as a distinguished section leader, a virtuosic soloist, and a maestro in our orchestras. What role does FileMaker play in your orchestra. Thank you to everyone at Harmonic who helped to make this video a success. It is a daily pleasure to come to work and write new compositions with you.